हे गाइस दिस इज मालिंकी वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल बॉयज ऑफ मालिंकी टुडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट बॉडी एक्सेस फॉर्मेशन इन एम्फीबियंस एंड इफ यू आर न्यू इन माय चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल एंड इफ यू लाइक माय वीडियो प्लीज डू लाइक कमेंट एंड शेयर माय वीडियो सो देयर आर थ्री मेन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एक्सेस इन एनिमल बॉडी डॉर्सल वेंट्रल एक्सेस दैट इज बैक टू बेली एंटीरियर पोस्टीरियर एक्सेस दैट इज हेड टू टेल एंड लेफ्ट राइट एक्सेस as the body forms it must develop in such a way that cells tissues and organs are organized correctly along these axes amphibians eggs have polarity it has two poles animal pole and vegetal pole animal pole contains small cells that divide rapidly here we have the animal pole the vegetal pole is present just below the animal pole vegetal pole contains large cells that divide slowly so here you will get large cells that divide slowly because the vegetal pole contains yolk so the cell division is slow amphibians egg is called mesolecithal that means it has moderate amount of yolk and it is telolecithal that means the yolk is concentrated in the vegetal pole now the sperm enters the egg through animal pole once sperm enters the egg the cytoplasmic movement creates a crescent like and gray colored area opposite to the point of sperm entry this area is rich in melanin and known as gray crescent this area marks the future dorsal side of embryo the side where the sperm enters marks the future ventral side of the embryo okay so we will see the molecular mechanism of amphibian axis formation first we will see dorsal ventral axis formation so two proteins are important for this dorsal ventral axis formation first is beta catenin and the gsk3 protein beta catenin is responsible for dorsalization and gsk3 is responsible for ventralization now gsk3 proteins block beta catenin other three proteins dsh gbp and wnt11 they are called accessory proteins they are found in vegetal portion of egg these three proteins actually block the expression of gsk3 and when gsk3 is absent beta catenin gets stabilized this results in dorsalization because beta catenin is responsible for dorsalization in the absence of any of the three proteins like dsa gbp and wnt 11 gsk3 is activated when gsk3 is activated it inhibits beta catenin just like this which results in ventralization because beta catenin is absent when beta catenin is absent gsk3 will be responsible for the ventralization now how beta catenin promotes dorsalization so actually beta catenin protein enhances the expression of siamoise and twin gene those gene products ultimately will enhance the expression of certain organizer genes like cordin nogin and guscoid these genes are responsible for dorsalization hence indirectly beta catenin is responsible for the dorsalization anterior posterior axis formation okay so brain formation requires inhibiting both the wnt and bmp pathways trunk is produced when wnt functions without the presence of bmps tail is formed 
when both the WNT and BAMP pathways are operating. And these are some proteins which inhibit BMP pathway and these are the proteins which inhibit WNT pathway. Next is left right axis formation. VG1 protein activates a nodal protein solely on the left side of the body. Nodal protein activates PITX2, PITX2 which is critical in distinguishing left sideness from right sidedness. This is all about today's lecture. I hope you liked the lecture. Thank you for watching my video.